If you're just tuning in, this is Desert Islands, the show where I make a mixtape based on my guest's 10 records that they would bring to a desert island. Today, I am making one for Radiator Girl, and I am speaking with Jane from Radiator Girl. Um, thank you for doing this show because you are kind of busy. I feel like it, I would see you sporadically play shows, and now you have a bunch of activity. So thank you for finding a way to shoehorn this show into oh, that. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on, Doc. Real pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. Pleasure to yeah. Be pleasure to be here. <laughs> so I, I, first of all, I want to talk about your playlist, because I know you have um, a live uh, set that is more focused on noise, but that's not Radiator Girl. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, but it's, yeah, but it's not, yeah, that's not Radiator Girl either. Depends on which side <laughs> kind of looking at. For, but. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to do the internet meme and say is Radiator Girl shoegaze, but not much shoegaze on this playlist. <laughs> not with this no. new EP, that's for sure. No, no. What I, I wanted, I kind of wanted to bring that up because, like, mm -hmm. your your first EP definitely had the the feeling of some like my bloody valentine some absolutely, slow dive yeah, some wall of sound yep. um yep. and it's, it's not that the guitar work isn't also there and mm -hmm. like the experimentation with that but it is a a, a, a new direction uh, not really a full departure like yep. there's remnants in there but it you are moving in a new direction it seems yeah we're trying to go kind of more in like a rock focused so, I mean, if you're trying to look in like the world of shoegaze, it's like you have your your, your, your dream pop esque type types with uh, mm. Slow Dive, My Bloody Valentine, like Cocteau Twins, like you're saying. But this is kind of more like leaning into like uh, Swerve Driver or Ride yeah. and yeah. Drop My Teens, just kind of a little more rock focused uh, while still maintaining some aspects of uh yeah the, the the sounds that we've been bringing on. And it's mostly we wanted to do this EP because uh we we just wanted to make a rock record uh just, mm -hmm. just to do something different because we didn't want to do the exact same thing over again uh but we didn't feel like we had enough songs to justify making a whole lp so stick with a four song ep and get our rock out and then probably shift back into another direction for the uh for the next release after that do you do everything in house who did you work for, with on this one so uh we did actually record it here at this uh at my studio um the, the shock cellar i like to call it but uh <laughs> we had uh ali jafar from another heaven mm. and die uh came in and recorded and mixed the album for us yeah. and they're a great band they're a great band phenomenal i mean for like this sound too he's really the the perfect guy for the job like mm -hmm. everything that he touches is just so unbelievably good and we just i just knew that i needed to work with him yeah. So I'm oh, so glad it, that you did it. There's a lot of uh, bands on your mixtape that I feel like, oh yeah, I, I could definitely imagine this being very inspirational to the Radiator Girl sound. But mm -hmm. there's one band we need to mention, just because one, <laughs> one of the best band names of all time. But this is a, a local band, Gay Witch Abortion, is on, yes, is on the list. Yes. And I'm so glad because it's it. I don't know if it's just the radio format, but like I, I'm, I just I'm glad more people are talking about gay witch abortion. When was the first time you <laughs> saw gay witch abortion? Because they were oh, in the local wow. bands I saw where I was like, "What is going on? This is awesome." <laughs> <laughs> well, they're definitely one of those bands that I heard about before actually seeing them. Um, oh, you see it, you see it on a lot of bills, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I think I found out about them because I was in high school at the time. I was at the electric fetus and I was just flipping mm. through kind of their new arrivals in the used CD section. And then I saw a band name called gay, Witch abortion. And I just <laughs> had to stop still in my tracks, like, hold up. What, it, what is this? And it was just, a, I think it was like $10 or something. It was the, uh, the CD Maverick, which was probably, yeah. I think their first or one of their earliest records, uh, grabbed it, put it in my car and just my, mind was blown like i've never heard anything that noisy and abrasive and so raw at the same time and i just knew that like these these guys are the real deal like i oh yeah i don't know how yeah. i could go that long without hearing something like that and then i finally got to see them uh i think maybe like a year or two later it was at the uh the triple rock rest in peace uh yeah. playing i 
it might have been the band Whores they were opening up for. They're great. Uh, Atlanta, yeah. Atlanta noise rock band. It was yeah. Whores, Buildings, um, and That's Gale another Jaworsh. building. It's oh, nah. buildings. I remember buildings. Yeah, are they still yeah. are they still around or are they? I have, doubt it. <laughs> I, I can't imagine they would be. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, someone on the internet, but I <laughs> I I don't think so. Honestly, buildings, uh, if you are still together, uh email me. <laughs> <it's enough> for me. <laughs> yeah, I d I I don't wanna I don't wanna guess and be wrong on the radio that would just that would just be no 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 it's a, it, it, but i also don't want to force people into because nowadays like art is so hard to make and it's so hard to come by stuff that like is that authentic and raw because yes. it's so hard to keep it sustainable at at, at this point so when you find mm -hmm. a band like that like a like hold on to them don't let them go like or, or at least encourage them buy a t-shirt come on people. yeah <laughs> yeah it's just kind of like bands like that really are kind of a gateway in a way to getting yeah. something heavier uh like you know started like my, my session with lightning bolt like listening to them a lot they were they were definitely one of those duo yeah. which uh still so probably one of the best shows i've ever seen in my life they, bucket list show club years for ago. sure I think yeah. I might have been at that. Sh was really? was it Night World? Because that that might have been that that was like the I convinced I City Pages to let me review that show, and I was just like, oh my god, someone's actually gonna get me into Lightning Bolt? <laughs> like, no, I like now I'm just going. Like, I yeah. I get to like do something else. Like that yeah. was a bucket list experience, because like they were, for those uninitiated, Lightning Bolt often played in the pit. And I was disappointed that they did not that like show, it. not that show. Yeah. I was in the pit, but they were not in the pit. No, <laughs> yes. no, but they, they usually did, you know, like they yeah. were. Oh, yeah. they Every were video you look up on them, you just see a circle of people around them, you know, yeah. uh, just like every basement hardcore show that's going on today. It's just like keeping the spirit alive. But <laughs> unfortunately, for the two times I've seen them, they've both been on stage, uh, which unfortunately, you know. Sometimes the art just needs to suffer for <laughs> some music needs to be on stage. And I think some music doesn't, you know, mm. and I, I think you uh, are an artist that kind of dabbles in some things that kind of straddle both worlds. Like I feel like yes. you have some things that could be performed in an elevator shaft and should be performed <laughs> in an elevator shaft. That'd be pretty cool. But like you do also like, I, I feel like a radiator girl is a something that is could be suited for a DIY venue, but also a stage. Um, mm -hmm. So before we talk about um, some gigs any further, let's actually, like, who is in the band right now? Who's going to be playing with you in this lineup at the release show? Because we have a release show at the Hook and Ladder I'm going to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, but let's talk about, like, who played on the record, who's going to be yeah. on the lineup, and uh, are tickets still available at this show? Absolutely. Well, uh, Radio to Girl is uh, consists right now of me, Shane, on guitar, mm -hmm. songwriter extraordinaire. <laughs> uh, and then we have Olivia Hines on bass, uh, Alex Narvison on drums, and then Mark Berg on vocals. Uh, we've been having that same lineup uh, going on almost two years now, yeah. pretty consistently. Uh, and yeah, like you said, we're going to be playing at the Hook and Ladder on April 18th. Uh, it's going to be our EP release show, and uh, we're going to be playing with Jest and Tava, just two great bands, ab absolute heavyweights. Uh, just great so bands. honored yeah. to be on the bill with them. Uh, and tickets are definitely still available. I believe you can find them online at the Hook and Ladders website. Uh, and like I said, it's an EP release show uh, because it's going to be tomorrow, the 11th, <laughs> our EP is going to be dropping uh That's, flowers in purgatory so this is i'm glad we could timing. get it I, I, I wanted to get ahead of it a little bit because mm -hmm. uh well scheduling is just weird in general but the yeah. show yeah. is not this weekend folks uh the ep is just finally available that you can listen to the yeah. whole thing the show is actually next week yes. um that's a thursday is that a thursday it or is a I thursday okay. yep it's a thursday um, so yeah, I, I, I just want to make sure we get that lineup out into the ether because first of all, Jess and Taba are two bands that have been on this show, but also mm -hmm. I really like watching those bands play live. So I, I wanted to get Phenomenal. you on 
this show. Yeah. But I, I have some questions about, are you going to have any visual components with the release of this Radiator Girl material? Because I know this is a different band, but Lowe is one of the most like <laughs> important artists, I think, uh, to come out of this state, let alone this country. Oh, and absolutely. you did some remarkable work on their last release like it, it folks mm -hmm. if you if you are unfamiliar with this uh go where can you watch the whole thing or just one video so it's just uh let's talk so about what you one did video about. yeah let's yeah. talk about low because who doesn't want to talk about low <laughs> <laughs> i will talk uh, about low stop me i will talk can, about him too i was <laughs> just i was just working with alan the other day over at uh turf club so it's uh, still still see He's him great. keep in touch all the time but uh just kind of circling back around before we get off on a tangent. Uh, mm -hmm. I like to keep things pretty minimal for uh, when yeah. I'm on stage and doing shows. So typically just like a strong backlight or keep it relatively static and moody. Uh, not yeah. to deter away, mostly because it's like I'm so busy playing guitar and basically doing everything else behind the scenes. that That's kind of the last yeah. thing I want to think about is just having that component. But uh, with low, um, I'm still so incredibly glad that I was able to work and collaborate with them. And um, what you were referring to was, uh, so White Horses, which was yeah. the first single off of Hey What, uh, which released, oh geez, what, was it two years ago, a year it's, ago? It's wild how much I don't time even remember. It's insane. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I created a visual film for the entirety of Hey What, which we did a premiere at the Parkway Theater. Mm -hmm. uh, couple months after the album released. I don't remember the exact details of what time that is because time is meaningless nowadays. But <laughs> uh, you can check out the very first section of that uh, on YouTube right now, just Low White Horses. It's the official music video uh, for that. And it just, they um, just being with them for, on tour with them for so many years just gave me such yeah. an appreciation for just the the adventure uh, adv uh, not inventiveness yeah of their sound and how it can pop like evolve over records even though they've been around for nearly 30 years and come yeah. out with just an absolute titan of a record so late into that career is just astonishing and they kept getting better too and i i always yeah. loved watching uh you work because i didn't it was fun watching you work with Lowe because you did live lights with Lowe. I, 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 I definitely want to talk about um, mm -hmm. the, the, the work we're talking about now, because that is, you can watch that now. And I, I, I definitely would like to see uh, more stuff like that in the future, but like, yeah, the, what you did live, you also did live lighting live with Lowe mm -hmm. for like several years. And I always thought uh, it was so dramatic yet simple. And that I mean, was the kind of the, the textures I really like because that's their music. It's like yeah. very dramatic, very vulnerable, but also mm -hmm. so simple. You really don't need much else. Um, so, yeah, I, I was curious if you had any plans on kind of using that skill set for, you know, this material or I yeah. want to do a ghost, you know, like because of, Absolutely. The, I feel like it would lend itself really well to both of these. Well, sounds. we do uh, actually have a music video out right now that you can go and listen to hey, uh, for our first <laughs> single that just came out called uh two birds which i think we released that about a week or two ago um but uh two birds the first single on our new ep flowers in purgatory it has a full music video that uh we created down down in my basement <laughs> here just uh just an apps absolute experimental psychedelic feedback laden trip of, of yeah. the video to just kind of help reflect some some of the weirder aspects of the, the, the music that we create but like i said uh two birds music video out now go and check it out that's actually uh one of the tracks um we heard at the top of the set so if you like what you heard uh, check out that video. But more importantly, if you like what you heard, where can folks hear it again? Streaming services these days yeah. are kind of 
uh, well, <laughs> a controversial topic, but is there a preferred place you would rather people stream your music? Some people, like, I don't care, but some people yeah. would rather you go to the website. Uh, do you have a destination you want people to go to? Well, I mean, like every other band, we're on basically every single streaming service you can possibly imagine at this yeah. point. But I would, if you want to listen to it on Bandcamp, that would probably mean even more because as we all know, like with streaming royalties and whatnot, a single purchase on Bandcamp accounts for thousands of streams. It's, <laughs> so it, it is ridiculous. I, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're on Bandcamp. Uh, just check us out, Radiator Girl uh, at bandcamp.com. Uh, but we're also on Tidal, Apple Music, Spotify, wherever wherever you get your fix uh, is, is the video on youtube or or yep, where do you yep. the video is on youtube right now um we also have it on our instagram reels and uh facebook yeah. reels as well too so uh but yeah youtube for the highest quality i recommend checking it out there <laughs> where is the best place for folks to keep up with radiator girl in the future because i know you have a lot going mm -hmm. on you have a noise project you have this project yeah yep. um so where can people follow it well, uh, I would say our Instagram is definitely the place where we're most active. Uh, so Radiator Girl, the band at Instagram uh, page. Uh, like Doc also mentioned, I do have a noise project called I Once Knew a Ghost. Uh, that's just just me kind of making experimental, weird, ambient drone type music. Uh, and I'm also on Instagram, Bandcamp, Spotify, whatever. Uh, I, I Once Knew a Ghost. So highly recommend checking that out if you want something a little <laughs> weirder in your day. <laughs> oh yeah, we 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 will definitely get into mm -hmm. some things. Uh, well, this this mixtape has had it all, and uh, thank you very much for curating this mixtape with me today because uh, this has been a lot of fun. It's always a lot of fun catching up with you because yeah, I feel like I, I can't I can't catch up with anyone unless I like have them on the show. <laughs> <laughs> these days like you said time doesn't mean anything i don't I mean, even know where time comes from <laughs> that's just why we play that's why we play shows with people right yeah. it's just so we can catch up with our friends for the first time yeah. in years <laughs> it's the only reason uh, we do it right <laughs> at this point uh well yeah. With, yeah well let's reiterate that because uh you yep. are playing with a few yes. mutual friends jess yeah. and taba at the mm -hmm. hook and ladder april 18th april 18th uh, and then the new ep is available tomorrow everywhere yes. so, everywhere uh, shane thank you so much for coming on the show today's mixtape is for radiator girl here on desert islands so if you're just tuning in let's get back to the mixtape shall we <laughs> 